You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. Venezuelan-born world traveled soprano Maria Brea makes her Winnipeg debut with the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra this evening. A proven talent, she's found success at competitions in Latvia, Paris, Cardiff, and has sung alongside the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra and Boston Philharmonic, amongst others, where she's dazzled audiences with her exciting renditions, committed performances, and impressive range. It's my pleasure to welcome Maria Brea to the Classic 107 studio. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, it's such a pleasure to have you here, to have you in Winnipeg, not only your debut in town, but this is, is your debut in the country. Is that right? Your first time performing in Canada? That is correct. Yes, my very, very first time singing in this beautiful country. Uh, well, aren't we lucky to have you here? I think making the rest of the nation je jealous, perhaps. So thrilled that you can finally uh, make your Canadian debut and you're doing it alongside the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. But before that, can we go back in time a little bit and talk about how you got here? Um, because yours is a most inspiring and impressive story. Um, you grew up in Caracas, Venezuela. And from what I've read and gleaned from past interviews that you've given, you didn't necessarily come from, from means, come from much, but, but you did grow up in a very musically and culturally rich household. Can you tell us more about your story? Yeah, um, I come from Caracas, Venezuela. I actually grew up in one of the most dangerous slums in Caracas. My country is a very special place. My mother was the daughter of a Trinidadian immigrant, so she didn't have much. She was very smart and made it into medical school. In my country, schools are free, and it has been always like that. But she encountered a really difficult time, which was the government that we have right now, which oppressed a lot of people. She was fired unfairly for opposing the government, and um, we were not able to move up, you know. So we stayed in the slum. When I was 14, I, I told my mom that I was gonna find a way to, to leave, and it was through music. I was very, very lucky to have a teacher that supported me. I was also very, very lucky to have my uncle who taught me English, you know, because we are Trinidadian. My grandmother's first language was English, and so was my mo so is my mother's, but she didn't have the patience to teach us. <laughs> um, so I, I was able to apply to school. I got into to Manhattan School of Music when I was 19 years old with a full scholarship. I had already studied music education, and I had studies in the conservatory, but it's a colonial system, so they didn't take any of my any of my credit. So mm -hmm. I had to start from zero, and I didn't have money to eat and live. So um, I started writing to people. The government said, we are not sending you there. And I won't use exactly what words they said about it when I said I was coming to the US or going yeah. to the US. and. Um, I saw a TV program, I sent them an email, and they, the woman called me the next day and said that she would come to my house, and I was very embarrassed, because I lived in a place that, that doesn't look nice, you know? Mm. And um, there are gunshots all the time, you know, and gangs. So she said, I need to go there. That's where the story is, and I said, okay. And we welcome her into our home. She filmed the video, and. Everyone saw it, an opera singer from a slum, you know? Um, that's not a normal place to find an opera singer. And so everyone wanted to interview me, and a beautiful family said, we will pay for your living expenses and for your insurance so that you can justify to the U.S. government that you can be there. And all you have to do, you don't have to pay us back, but never make up a story and never lose who you are as a person and um, be proud of being Venezuelan. And that, that was it. Then I went to Juilliard with a full scholarship and they paid for everything, a Kovner Fellowship. And then the rest is history. Um, well, you've done such an incredible job representing where you come from, um, right? And what an inspiring story. Uh, like you say, you left for New York uh, 2011 or, or thereabouts at the Manhattan School. And then, yeah, Juilliard on a very prestigious Kovner Fellowship. D did you ever envision kind of looking back now and, and the career you've had thus far, one that continues, uh, did, did you ever envision this, that you would be traveling around the world singing, making a living, you know, doing what you love? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I just, I said, you know, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. And I sort of was, I was very hard headed. I would practice eight hours a day. Um, my friends made fun of me. Even the musicians were like, you're not practicing eight hours. Like, you're crazy. And I'm like, okay, well, but I, I just, I have this sense of urgency that I have to do this right now. 
And people were like, but take your time. Like, and I just, I just knew that I had to do something. And when I got to school, it was the same way. I mm -hmm. didn't party in Manhattan School of Music. I had this fear. I don't know if that's healthy, but I, you know, I've worked through it. Yeah. Now I have a normal life. <laughs> but I had this fear that everything was going to go and that I had to really study. And, you know, in my first semester, I got all A's, which I would record every class. And, you know, I just had this sense of I was in survival mode. Yeah. So then the rest came just i guess that uh it, i was just scared you know i was i was very scared because um i felt like my family would need me and and it was the case there was a moment where my my father had to travel to colombia to get money and to get insulin and you know i i it was not just you know it was what i could do to protect my family and so it's a it's a it's a combination but I also love music so it was yeah. it was nice you know at least I chose a career that I really love and I love making music and I love I love the music that I I sing I I do probably like 60% of what I sing is Latin American music yeah yeah, yeah. Um, well, okay, let's get chatting more about what you're going to be singing. But again, I mean, it's just a, a story of, of hard work and dedication, and, and we, we can't overlook it, your talent, because yours is a, a, a wonderful, overwhelming talent, and you just sing with such conviction in all the videos that I've seen online, and so excited for you to perform alongside the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra. This just the latest stop in this a wild journey that has brought you to the country of Canada now. Um, in, in reading your bio, Maria, um, you perform plenty of opera and oratorio, works by Bizet, Handel, Mozart, Donizetti, and so on, and, and like you say, performing lots of, of Latin composers as well. With Anne Manson and the MCO, you'll be performing compositions by two living composers, uh, ones with whom you actually have a, a close personal connection. Um, can we chat first about the four Afro-Cuban poems by Odalina de la Martinez? Um, you actually gave the North American premiere of these works. Is, is that right? That is correct. With the composer conducting? Yeah. <laughs> what a wild story that is. Tell, tell us more uh, about these poems and the song cycle created. Well, these are poems that are very well known across the whole world is, is Guillen's poems. This is part of the Negrismo uh, uh, period, and which means to empower black people. My grandmother was a black woman from Trinidad. Um, I do have a big connection with this poetry and the Negrismo um, um, period because it just empowered empowered all Afro descendant and uh, African Afro Latinos. So I just just from that I I'm, I'm really excited about the poetry. And then the music. The music is very, very Cuban. There is a lot of clave, there is a lot of rhythms, there is just a sense of yes, it is classical music, but it is felt in a different way. And yesterday we were rehearsing and and there were so many funny moments because our composer, she is brilliant. Uh Odaline is she calls herself Chachi. Hmm. She's just so incredible. The way she takes this music, makes it to the highest level, and at the same time makes everyone dance. You know, it's just nothing. I don't think I've performed a piece that has this spirit. So I'm just so excited for I, everyone to see it. I, I saw some of those um, rehearsal videos that were, you know, posted on social media alongside Ann Manson and the MCO. And you couldn't help but move, right? When you're performing this music, it's it's just intrinsic to what it is. Um, what's it like performing alongside the MCO? How'd rehearsal go yesterday? They're wonderful. And they got the groove. <laughs> yeah, you know, good, they were good. dancing and yeah, they were yeah. making jokes about it. I were like, well, we, I don't know if we have it. And then she was like, yes, you have it. And then they got it. And then they started dancing themselves and laughing. And I think it was such a wonderful rehearsal. It's an incredible orchestra. The sound that this orchestra makes is just so beautiful. And their Haydn was just exquisite. Mm. And our maestra, of course, has a sense of rhythm. Like she was born Latina. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Anne Madsen, just what a, what a, what a phenomenal talent. Uh, so performing not only music of Odalina de la Martinez, but also uh, another composer with whom you have a, a, a close connection, Alexandre Regnaud, born in Paris to, to Venezuelan parents. Is, is that right? Yes. <laughs> Everything seems to stem from Venezuela these days. What, what did you two first meet? Well, we actually met through the social media. Um, he is fabulous. He's a fabulous composer. He lives a very tough reality because he is in Venezuela. And his mother is very sick. And so he plans to actually go and leave. Mm -hmm. But he wrote this work. He said that he had listened to a recording. He said, oh, my God, I found a Venezuelan singer. And, you know, I, I saw, I think he saw an article or something. He read my story. He heard a recording 
and he composed something and he sent it to me. And it was so funny because during that time, that's when I, w I was being engaged to come to do this. They asked me if I knew a work <laughs> <laughs> that um, I could bring that would work well for a chamber orchestra. And he just had to send me the music. It was the weirdest thing, the same day. Yeah. The world works in mysterious ways. I know. And I said, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him to do it. I love the music that he was doing. He's doing something sort of colonial with themes of, you know, Jose Angel Lamas, and he's just so inspired, and he's trying to find his own voice through the music and trying to find the voice of a Venezuelan composer in this situation and circumstances. So he chose an amazing poem by Spanish poet Antonio Machado, and everything just worked out. This is how it came to be. <laughs> um, this part of his uh, symphonic portrait series, which he describes as an aesthetic composition concept. C can you describe what that that is exactly? Yeah, of course. He likes to think about, you know, symphonies. People, he says that people nowadays don't want to sit through a whole symphony, which I don't know why, but, but that's what he says. Yeah, he yeah. says, I want to capture people into what, something that happens in an hour into seven minutes. Hmm. So people get this experience of something large, but it in actually in a smaller form, and then mm. taking different pictures of, of um, he likes to work with a lot of paintings and pictures and inspirations by, by painters, and so he, he this one came to be something that has to do with our country, and the situation of our country, and also the perspective of an artist who's trying to find themselves in a situation that is so difficult to be in when we are living in Venezuela. We are living right now the biggest exodus in history. Seven million Venezuelans have left the country. So it's there is this sense of finding yourself through through the arts so that you can find freedom and you can continue to just be eternal in the verses of music because music brings everyone together and art heals, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is what this symphony is about. Um, it is certainly going to be a powerful performance. Um, what a way to make a Canadian debut, uh, Maria. And, and I just want to thank you so much for joining me this morning ahead of that show tonight. It's been a real pleasure to have you here in the Classic 107 studio. Thank you so much. And uh, so much love to everyone in Canada. You guys are so nice. And thank you so much for having me here and for MCO to bring in, for bringing me here. Well, we're just thrilled to have you. You can see Maria Brea and the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra tonight, 7.30 p.m. at the Crescent Arts Center. Music of Odeline de la Martinez and Alexandre Regnaud, plus music of Mozart and Haydn for good measure. Uh, tickets available at vmco.ca.